is Joe Van Cleve and uh, I'm coming today from my garage workshop on a cold, wintry, snowy New Mexico day. And I'm going to talk today about this experimental contraption, which is my attempt at building a mechanical shutter for this large format 8x10 nested box camera that I showed you in a previous video. This shutter is not a finished device. Um, it is experimental. It works, sort of. It has some issues. But I'm showing this to you mainly to encourage you that there might be ideas you have that you want to do and you don't think you can do them. And my encouragement is just go ahead and try it because that's what I did here. So I'm going to show you what works and what doesn't work yet, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll have some fun with this today. Okay, so you might remember this 8x10 inch uh, nested box camera that I showed on a previous video. Um, it's made from foam cords, covered in this uh, wood laminate. But this front frame that kind of sticks out from the front of the camera, it has, um, the front part is the guillotine shutter, the mechanical shutter for timing exposures greater than about one second. And behind it is the slot for the aperture plates, and there is the lens. Um, so this experimental um, shutter mechanism is made from a frame of wood, and it's covered in masonite board. And it's designed to fit snugly over the front of this camera. And I actually have these brass pieces that engage the back of the box and there's elastic bands that would hold it on to keep them from slipping off. But I'm going to show you the close-up of uh, what all the parts are of this shutter. Okay, let's go over this uh, shutter mechanism and see what all the parts are. First of all, in the middle, is an opening. It's about two and a half inches or so, two and a quarter inches for the uh, the lens angle of view. So there's your lens opening. There is uh, this rotating disc and it has two blades on it and one blade has this brass tube glued to it and there is this bracket and there's another brass tube that acts as a shutter rod and you basically engage that and that holds it in place in the closed position. Then there is a spring here and there is a draw cord that wraps around a pulley around um, the middle of this uh, shutter disc and this screw down here is a pivot point for this cord so you stretch the string out around there to tense up the shutter and this so this blade is going to open the shutter and then this blade here is going to close the shutter and attached to this blade is a metal is a wooden arm with a piece of brass on the end and it's going to hit this shock absorber to dampen the shock of closing so I'm going to go ahead and fire the shutter here so that's how that shutter fires let me relax the spring tension and show you another detail that you might be interested in which is there is a pin here and this is highly experimental so I have to use a pair of pliers but this pin pulls out and you can adjust the timing between there's three different positions there's here here and here so what for instance I'm gonna set this to this setting and I will lock the shutter, tense it up, and then activate it. So you'll notice on this particular shutter firing that the shutter didn't completely close. It actually closed and then it kind of falls back. And that is one of the bugs on this particular <laughs> device that hasn't been worked out. So really, practically speaking, the way it is now, there's actually only two practical shutter speed settings. I'll, I'll get to the speed part of it in a minute. Uh, to finish describing the setup on this, this big aluminum piece is, is the pivot arm for this pulley. And the challenge I had was getting the axis of rotation 
exactly perpendicular so this thing would rotate freely. And in order to do that, I had to have this mounting block up here for this arm. There is two different leveling screws that you can adjust the side to side and fore aft tilt of this arm to get this pivot point to be perpendicular to where it should be. And that took a lot of trial and error to get it to be reliably, to operate reliably. Now the thing is, this particular disc, there's a thin piece of plywood behind it and there's a piece of craft felt behind there. And there's also some black craft felt underneath this, these blades. The attempt is to try to make it light tight. But the consequence of that is it also has some friction as it's sliding. Um, but so I, again, as the, the most reliable shutter speeds are the other two, and I'm just going to set this to the middle one right now. Now I could drill some more holes, but as I'll, as I'll mention in a little bit later about the shutter speeds, there it's not really needed. So let me fire this one more time just to show you. So that operates pretty good. So, in an attempt to measure the shutter speed, I had made this little circuit board. Um, what it is, is this device is an optical um, LED and phototransistor pair that was salvaged out of a VCR. And there's, there's like an LED, there's a diode for biasing, there's another diode and a couple of resistors. And this thing is powered by a 9 volt battery. And what I'm doing is I'm sticking it inside the box camera right behind the lens and I'm shining a bright light through the front of the shutter and I'm hooking up my oscilloscope here. Here's probes back here. And uh, so when I fire this thing, I'll, uh, I'll get a little pulse on the oscilloscope screen and I can measure the pulse width and figure out the timing of the shutter. So that's my crude way of measuring shutter speed. So here's an attempt at uh, a test firing of the shutter with the, with the uh, shutter speed detector in it. You can see the scope screen. And it looks like it was about three divisions on the screen and at 50 milliseconds per division. That's 150 milliseconds. And when you do the math, so 150 divided by 1,000, invert it, that's about one-seventh of a second approximately. So having repeatedly done this shutter speed test over and over again with the three positions on the shutter, first of all, the speeds do tend to vary a, a bit based on, I'm thinking, the status of the spring, whether it's been relaxed for a while, the friction in this cord and this pivot point and in the disc. So there's a lot of variability there, way too much to be accurate. And um, the three positions, I'm getting like about a, a six and a half of a second, around an eighth, a seventh or an eighth on the middle one and about seven and a half on the other one. So there's not a whole lot of variation in speed between the three. So it's really kind of like a one speed shutter that's not all that consistent. Um, so I haven't uh, gone out yet and made test exposures with mechanical shutter, but we're going to do that here. But before we do that, I wanted to say that this shutter was the result of a whole series of design ideas that I worked out in a photographic sketch journal over a period of years. And uh, it was working with this sketch journal that got me to the point of, of coming up with this idea here. But there's a lot of other ideas for these mechanical shutters. There's vertical or horizontal uh, slit shutters that could be operated by springs. Um, and there's probably ways of making these particular kinds of rotary shutters a lot smaller. But, uh, so this is my first stab at, at making a mechanical shutter. So it was uh, back in February of 2007 that I began uh, sketching these ideas for rotary cameras with spring operated and blades and 
Um, I had various ideas for latching mechanisms and release pawls and all that. And then this one you start to get to see the evolution with a set of blades and some adjustable holes and stuff like that. And that's basically where this idea came from. So I really had a lot of fun designing and building this shutter from the design part in my sketch journal, conceptualizing all the different ways you could make a shutter work, um, to actually building it just out of spare scrap materials in my workshop. It's not a fancy piece of construction at all. It's just real simple and very crude, actually. But what it reminds me of is cameras like the plastic toy cameras, like the Holgas and the uh, Lomos and the Dianas and whatnot. You know, these are simple spring-operated one-speed shutters. Um, and they are remarkable for what they do, considering how much they cost. But, you know, a, a camera like a Holga is the direct descendant from the Brownie box camera. This is an ANSCO, but they were very similar kind of technology of fixed focus lens, a one-speed shutter, maybe one or two aperture settings, and that's it. So you really appreciate the history of this kind of camera technology by working with these projects. Um, and the challenge for me was if I can have a shutter that operates in a fraction of a second, that means I can use my lens on my 8x10 camera at a wider aperture to get a more narrow depth of focus instead of it being an ultra small 3 millimeter aperture with wide depth of focus only and 2 second shutter speeds or 4 second shutter speeds, I can maybe get fractional second speeds and uh, more interesting kinds of images. But as you know uh, from seeing uh, the results, it's still a work in progress. It's still an experimental device. It doesn't work as well as I wanted it to. This is part one of a two-part video. The next part, we're going to go out in the field with that still experimental shutter and try to make some usable images with the 8x10 camera shooting Harman Direct Positive paper. Until then, this is Joe Van Cleve. You have yourself a good day and work on some of those camera building projects.